Marie. Marie. Marie! Charlie, what happened? What's the matter? Marie, you, you forgot to give me my evening mat. Is that why you were shouting? Why, yes, Marie. You know that I cannot sleep if I don't get my evening mats. Charlie, I'm quite certain I gave them to you. Well, I'm quite certain you didn't. If you really can't remember, you can always look on your finger. Look what I found. And what's that? It's a red ribbon. Don't say, and why do you have a red ribbon tied around your pinky? Because I got my evening mats. See? I'm sorry, Marie. It's okay, Charlie. Don't worry about it. It's just, I know that I cannot sleep if I don't get my evening mats. And I couldn't sleep, so I thought that just... I you wasn't. know what I think? That you're secretly in love with me and you're only realizing now? I mean, no. Aww. I think, Charlie, that you're anxious and scared and excited because tomorrow is your big day. Could that be? We talked about it many times. My big day, huh? Yes, Charlie, your big day. There's going to be a lot of changes and things are going to be different. But everything's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Just like we talked about, remember? Thank you, Marie. You're always so kind to me. For you, always, my dear Charlie. Now, you should try and get some rest. You don't want to be tired or tomorrow or even oversleep. No, that will be terrible. Good night, Charlie. Good night, Marie. Oh, Marie. Yes, Charlie? Will you miss me? Of course, Charlie. Of course I will miss you. Will you marry me? Good night, Charlie. Good night, Marie. Uh, Marie? Yes, Charlie? Can you do me one last favor? And what's that? Can you get the doctor for me? Yes, but do try and get some rest now. Charlie, you called for me? No. Maybe. What's the matter, Charlie? I'm not ready, dog. I'm not... I'm not, you know, cured yet, I don't think. Why do you say that? It isn't safe for me to go out into the world yet. I'm still... I'm still... Scared? Maybe. Charlie, how long have you been here now? Oh, well, I don't know. Oh, at least at least two weeks, if not three. Well, two or three? Which one? I think three, definitely three. Charlie, you've been here now for 17 years. 17 years? Okay. Well, that would have been my third guess. <laughs> and you know, after 17 years, makes me believe that you're ready to move on. No. <clears throat> Do you remember the night when you came here, Charlie? It was an exceptionally cold <coughs> night in April. April 16th, 17 years ago. It was also exceptionally quiet until you arrived. Your sister dropped you off. She was crying. You were screaming for the most part, and all you told me was, I killed him, I killed him, I, I had no idea what was going on, I didn't know who you were, I didn't know what you had done, all I heard from you was, I killed him, I killed him, over and over, your sister was a mess and it took you quite a while to calm down. I tried to ask you questions, but you were just screaming and crying. But then, for one second you looked at me, just, just one brief second. And when I looked into your eyes for the very first time, I, I saw it. I thought I saw it. I thought I saw a killer. Deep down I thought I saw it. 
you, you almost have to believe it. But now, after all these years, when I look at you, when I look at your eyes, I know that you never were and never will be. You almost have to believe it. But now, I know, I know that when I look into your eyes, that you are not a killer and that you're ready. You really think so? I know so, Charlie. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome, Charlie. I will miss you, Doctor. I will miss you as well, Charlie. Will you miss Marie? She's not going with you. <laughs> will I ever see you again, Doctor? I hope so, Charlie. Who will play chess with you when I'm gone? Don't worry, I will find somebody. Not as good as you are, but I will find somebody. I'll miss your fables too. You don't have to, you know them all by heart. But what if I forget them? You won't, <coughs> you wrote them all down. Did I? Every single one I ever told you. Look. Well, I must be really smart. <laughs> Good night, Charlie. Good night, Doctor. North, if not more. Slept a couple hours. Rode ten more. You hadn't woken up, so I got worried. Passed the hospital, thought, what the heck? So, here we are. So what? I can't believe I killed him. Why didn't you stop me? Trust me, nothing could have stopped you. You were pretty angry if anger's even the right term. What the hell am I going to do now? I can't be here. They're going to find me sooner or later. I'm not so certain. I mean, it was pretty dark. You were wearing a mask. There were lots of people. Anyone could have killed him. But we're far away now. But what am I going to tell the doctors? Has anyone seen me? Quite possibly. All I did was drop you on the steps of the hospital and rode away like any good brother would do. When I came to check on you, they'd taken you in. It took me a while to find your room without being seen. Ah, that doesn't include the lady in the room down the hall. <laughs> She thought it was her late husband coming to take her. All I managed to say was, oops, before it ran out. Anyways, I'm glad you finally woke up. This is not good. They're going to find out, I know it. Thank you are the words you're looking for, my dear brother. Thank you for what? Saving your life. By bringing me here? Don't be ungrateful, old man. Without me, you'd be dead already. They would have caught you right on the spot. At least you're alive and far away now. You got a fair chance. Oh, you're awake. Glad to see you've made it through the night. How are you feeling? Um, well, well, I... Oh, don't worry. You don't have to tell me now. The doctor will be in soon to see you. The doctor? No, the wizard. What? Of course the doctor, silly. 
Do you even realize where you are? I'm... Uh... No, seriously. Do you know where you are? What is your name? We have no information on your identity. I... Um... Yes? Uh... I don't remember. What do you mean you don't remember? I don't remember my name. You don't remember your name? No, I don't. I don't even know how I got here. Wow. Well, that's, um... Well, I would have loved to know what happened to you. We found you on the bottom of the steps last night. Covered in blood from the wound on the top of your head. Had to stitch you up. Oh, don't touch it. It's pretty big. Who would do such a thing to you? <clears throat> uh, I... I fell. Oh, so you do remember something. Uh, that's all. That's all I remember. <laughs> I fell and uh, it hit my head. Then everything went back, but I don't remember where I was or what I was doing. Oh, well, I'm sure it'll come back to you soon. Here, take your medicine. Oh, I don't need medicine. I think I will be okay. Don't be so ridiculous. You had 104.9 last night. You better take your medicine, or else you'll be dead before you remember your own name. I'm Mary, by the way. I'll be here if you need anything. Let me get the doctor for you. Why did you bring me here, you idiot? I was trying to be helpful. You never acknowledge what I do for you, ever. Why did you bring me to a hospital? I was trying to save your life. You could have checked my pulse. Good morning. Glad to see you're awake. Not sure, but... Sorry I didn't come earlier to check on you. Patient can do room down the hall was all spiked up. She thought she'd seen the ghost of her dead husband come to take her away. I said to her, people don't usually die from an appendectomy. But all she kept saying was, he said, oops. <laughs> don't say it. Mary mentioned you said you fell. Yes, yes, I did. I think. I don't remember anything. Not even my name. Mm. That is quite peculiar. Do you remember what you were doing? You were covered in dirt and blood. Presumably your own. I... Um... I don't know. I'm sorry. All I remember is falling off from somewhere and blanking out. Mm. Do you remember who brought you here? I have no idea. But maybe someone found me. Well, losing your memory from a wound such as yours, something I have never encountered. Let's give it a couple days and uh, see what happens. But surely the one or the other relative must be looking for you. Um, I don't know if I have any. You don't know if you have any relatives? No. Are you from this area? Possibly. Do you know how old you are? I don't remember. What is your favorite thing to eat? What? How is your relationship with your mother? Uh, are you a vegetarian? Uh, I'm sorry, but I really can't answer any of these questions. I told you I don't remember anything. Well, I was just trying to pry some memory. You'd better rest. You had a high fever, and we had to stitch up your wound. It was pretty big. Mary will be coming to check on you in a little bit. Thank you. Good job, Chuck. Or, or is it Luke? Barry? Shut up. Oops. You're the one who brought me here. To save your life. You know what? I think, I think that will work. It will give us a few extra days. I mean, they're not going to suspect anything unless someone comes looking for me, right? Yeah, I mean the police, if anything. Well, 
I will just stay here for a couple of days. Stay put, you know? And then I will remember my name, who I am. I'm some farmer from some unknown place, and I will be okay. Yeah, you'll be okay. And what about your hospital bill? Do we not have the money from last night? Well, not exactly. When things got out of hand and you were lying on the floor, I didn't exactly think it'd be wise to take the money. What? So you left it? Yeah, I left it. So what? Well, you are going to have to find me some money to get out of here. Well done, Chuck. Well done. Listen, it's the only chance we got. You go and get some money. I will lie here and pretend who, I don't know who the hell I am. <laughs> Do you have a better plan? Yeah, we could run away now. No, that would be too suspicious. Give it a couple of days. Oh, and Steve. What? Thank you. I like the sound of that. Marie. Yes, Charlie? Marie, I've been thinking. About what, Charlie? About us, you know. If I wasn't a killer, and didn't have such a short temper, I'd be the perfect man for you. How so? Well, I would fulfill your every desire. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. And how do you know what I desire? I just know. You're quite something, Charlie. Yeah. I guess the killer thing would turn into a problem sooner or later. <coughs> and why is that? Well. There's no guarantee that I wouldn't eventually kill you. It's in my system, you know. First, I would fulfill your every desire, and then I would kill you. <laughs> Do you really think so? I don't know, I guess. I mean, that's why I'm here. I can't control my temper, and I happen to kill people. <laughs> well, I think you would never hurt your wife. You'd be a very caring husband, just not mine. Ouch, Marie, ouch. <laughs> You know I'm married. Plus, we're friends, and our friendship is very Aiden. important to me. What's his name again? Aiden? I don't like that name. It doesn't go with yours at all. <laughs> you should get yourself ready now. Dr. Hales will be coming any minute for your afternoon game of chess. I guess you're right. <coughs> our games are getting more and more boring, though. He's the worst chess player I've ever played with. Cut him some slack, Charlie. Not everyone's as genius as you. Amen, sister. How are you today? I've just been rejected. Did you propose to her again? I did, kind of, indirectly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not unusual. How are you otherwise? I'm okay, I guess. You're 12 minutes late. Good. Okay is better than not okay. You ready for nail-biting game of chess? Nail-biting only for you, doctor. <laughs> You're awful. <laughs> Well, not everyone is as genius as you are. That's what Marie just said right after she rejected me. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll find another woman who will return your love. Of course you would say that. You're my doctor. <laughs> no, I mean it, but... Maybe you just have to look in other places. What do you mean? Is there another nurse in a different department? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean... Other places. Is an outside of this hospital. What do you mean, doctor? I mean, maybe someday it will be good for you to move out, you know? You've been here for 14 years, Charlie. Uh. No. Charlie, as I said, you've been here for 14 years. I said no! I cannot leave here! I think you can, and I think it will be good Stop for you. Stop it! Well, I will kill you too! I don't think you would. Try me, doctor. <laughs> Charlie, 
I've known you for many years, so I'm not too worried. Plus, why would you hurt somebody you like? I guess you're right. I know I'm right, Charlie. I'm sorry, Doc. About what? <clears throat> you know, don't worry. Check. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you. I want you to think about it. Just to think about it. <laughs> Can you do that? Can you tell me a fable, Doc? Sure. Which one? Um, how about... How about the lion and the donkey? The lion and the donkey? Yes, please. <laughs> Alright. So... A donkey and the lion agreed to go hunting together. <laughs> Freaking brilliant, I love it. <laughs> In search for game, the two hunters saw a herd of wild goats running into a cave, so they laid the plan to catch them. The donkey would run into the cave and would drive them out, and the lion... What about the lion? Well, tell me about the lion! And the lion would wait outside the cave and strike them down as they ran out. Brilliant. These two are so smart. The plan worked beautifully. Yes! <laughs> the donkey ran into a cave and made such a frightful deal, kicking and braying with all his might, that all the goats ran out of the cave, full of fear and panic, only to fall victim to the lion. Did they die? Yes, Charlie, that would be the purpose of hunting. Oh no. <laughs> Go on. So, the donkey came proudly outside of the cave and asked the lion. Did you see how I made them run? That's right, and the lion said... Wait, what did the lion say? What did the lion say? <laughs> the lion said, indeed, and had I not known me, I would have run away as well. I, I, I don't get it. I, I don't get this one, dog. I don't get it. Well, the moral of the story is, the loud The loud mouth bolster doesn't frighten those who know him. That's right. Yeah, I totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it, dogs. So. <laughs> well, one could also say, the loud dogs don't bite. Oh, I love dogs. Dogs are a man's best friend. Say it in so dog, you know it's true. <laughs> Not if you're a cat person. Dogs have owners, cats have staff. <laughs> I guess one could put it that way. Can you tell me a dog fable? One with a dog in it? A fable with dogs. How about the one with the wolf and the dog? Oh, splendid. I love that one. Alright, so... A gaunt wolf was almost dead with hunger when he happened to meet a house dog who was passing by. Ah, cousin, said the dog. I knew how it would be. Your irregular life will be soon the ruin of you. Why don't you work as steadily as I do and have your food given regularly to you? <laughs> I like that. The dog thinks the wolf's his cousin. <laughs> Brilliant. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> and the wolf said, I would have no objection if I could only get a place. Oh, and what did the dog say? The dog said, well, come, to, come with me to my master and you shall share my work. So the two went together towards the town. On the way there, the wolf noticed that the fur on some part of the dog's neck were pretty much worn away. So he asked him how it had come about. Oh, that's nothing, said the dog. That's the only place where the collar had been put up on at night to keep me chained up. It chafes away, but one soon get used to it. Is that all? said the wolf. Then goodbye to you, Master Dog. Mm. So deep. Brilliant. Brilliant and deep. It's a good one. You know why I like this one? It's deep. And I like deep. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> well, you better start. You better start free than be a fat slave. Brilliant, Doctor. Brilliant. So deep. I don't know how you do it. They're not mine, I just tell them to you. But you tell them so well. How, how, about, how about one more? How about, how, how about the rabbit's PhD? The rabbit's PhD. Your favorite one. Oh, it is my favorite. The first one I ever told you. Well, how about we'll save this one for the next time? Uh, 
but it's my favorite one. Go on, tell me. Well, you better start free. Oh. I see what you did there, Doc. Pretty good, I must say. Pretty good. Um, checkmate, by the way. Okay. I guess you're right. Well done, Charlie. Well done. Mm -hmm. well, I wish I could say the same to you, but really, you're awful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. You're too kind. I'm just being honest, Doc. <laughs> just being honest. <laughs> So move out, you say, huh? <coughs> Only when you're ready. Just think about it. I think you, it would be good for you. Only when I'm ready. But what if I'm never ready? I think you will be. Well, if you think so, then I'll think about it. Good. How are you feeling today? Good morning. Maybe. Remember anything? Um, no, not really. <sighs> that must be so terrible. I can't even imagine. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. <clears throat> Say, Mary, would you be able to answer a few questions for me? Most certainly. What would you like to know? Well, first of all, where are we? What's the name of this place? Wow. You really don't remember anything, do you? No. <laughs> called Alfred. The population is just under 1,000. The summers are hot, but... Alfred? Yes. It's a funny name, isn't it? I've lived here all my life. Couldn't imagine living anywhere else. How far are we from the city? What city? What do you, what do you mean, what city? <laughs> the city. Boston. Boston? Why, that's over a hundred miles away from here, if I'm not mistaken. A hundred miles? A hundred miles what? South? East? Oh, a hundred miles south. We're in the state of Maine. Why? What's in Boston? Do you have relatives there? Are you starting to remember things? Oh, oh it's nothing. <clears throat> I was born there. I remember things from childhood, but not much. Well, that's something. Maybe if you tried really hard, you'll remember your own name. I hope so. Maybe, maybe what would help is if you could get me a newspaper. Maybe if I read a little. Oh, sure, we've got two. The Alfred Inquirer or the Alfred Post. <laughs> Could you get me the Boston Herald? The Boston Herald? Well, that could take quite a bit to get here. That's okay. I will wait. I would really appreciate it, Mary. <gasps> okay! <laughs>
I'm back with your test results here. Everything came back completely normal. Something isn't making sense to me. How hard could you have fallen to lose the memory of your entire life? <laughs> I'm as puzzled as you are. I mean, give me anything. Give me at least a name. You must remember your name. Or your mother's maiden name. Or your date of birth. Nothing. Is there really nothing? No. <clears throat> nothing. Sorry. I once had a patient who told me he lost his memory when he got electrocuted, changing a light bulb. He claimed he forgot <coughs> who he was and where he lived. Just like you. It turned out he had selective memory loss. He'd forgotten that he was married to what I would politely call a beast of a woman. <laughs> I don't blame him, to be honest. Okay. You're not married to a really beastly woman, are you? <laughs> no, I mean, not that I remember. Because that would make things a lot easier if you were just married to a beast. I could probably prescribe you something. <laughs> you know, Doctor, I wish I would remember something, but there's nothing. It's like a black hole. The only thing I remember is waking up here. And you're 100% certain that you're not running away from your wife that's beastly. <laughs> As I said, I don't remember. I hope not. But tell me, Doctor, has anyone come to look for me? Not that I know. Were you expecting someone? Someone, uh, beast-like? <laughs> well, no, I mean, yes, I mean, I thought if someone came to look for me, maybe that would help me to remember, you know? Yes, that would be quite likely. Well, I still feel quite weak, you know. Maybe I should rest. Why, yes, you'd better. I'll be back to check on you in a little bit. In the meantime, I will research some activities that will help you remember. Thank you, Doctor. Where on earth have you been, Doctor? Oh, I'm sorry. I was visiting other patients. What do you mean, other patients? We have an appointment. Every day at 3 o'clock we have an appointment, you know that? Yes, and I apologize. And as I said, I was visiting other patients and got hung up. How am I supposed to trust you if I cannot rely on you? You're nine minutes late. I was worried something had happened. And then I thought, well, if nothing happened, then I will kill you. You don't want me to kill you, do you? Of course not, Charlie. But I've known you for nine years, so I'm not too worried. Plus, why would you kill somebody who's trying to help you? You're trying to help me? By being late? I hold my minutes, doctor! I hold my minutes! Again, I apologize. Would you like to cancel our game of chess? It might be too late to start. No. No. That, that would be silly. You're black, I begin. I'm sorry I shouted, Doc. You know how I deal with people not being on time. It's, it's tough for me. I understand, but see, sometimes it happens, and it means nothing. What do you mean it means nothing? Well, sometimes people are late because they either meet someone on the way, or because they forgot something, or because the bus was late. 
But what most of the time, people are late because something happened to them. Something really, 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 really terrible. Check. Well, most of the time, people are late because of frivolous reasons. Your scenario doesn't happen very often. I'm telling you, Doc, you don't know what you're talking about. Check. Charlie, there's someone here to see you. Who? Marie? No, it's not Marie. Who? Another researcher, like the other day? No, another researcher either. Well, then it must be Marie. Who else would want to see me? There's nobody else. It's your sister. Your sister Stephanie is here. My sister? Yes. My, my, my sister is Stephanie. Yes, and she would like to see you. Can I call her in? Well, I cannot be alone with her. You know that. You don't have to. I'll be here as well. And Marie. Can Marie be here also? Of course. Everything to make you feel comfortable. Charlie? Hey, hey Charlie. It's me, Stephanie. How, how have you been? You look all grown up. I missed you, Charlie. This was a bad idea. I look all grown up, you say? What? Well, yes. Yes, you do. How grown up? Like an adult. Like Dad? Yes. Yes, just like Dad. Would he be proud of me? Of course he would. Why wouldn't he be? Because he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's no longer here, is he? And that's because I killed him. I murdered him. And that's why I'm here. Charlie, it was an accident. Accident or not, my father cannot be proud of me. And that's because he's dead. And he's dead because I killed him. But Stop Charlie. it! <coughs> Charlie, why don't you tell your sister what you've been doing here? I played chess. That's right. John is an excellent chess player. Really? That's, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, but the doctor doesn't really know how to play. I beat him every time. <laughs> <laughs> is that so, Dr. Hills? Oh, Charlie's not kidding. I, I never won a single game. Sometimes I wonder if the doctor lets me win, but then I think, no, I'm just too good to beat. <laughs> I'm writing a book. You're writing a book? That, that's wonderful, Charlie. What's it about? It's fables. I'm writing a book about fables. It's a collection of my favorite ones. The doctor tells me them. I love fables, especially ones with dogs. I love dogs. <laughs> and, and rabbits. My all-time favorite is the rabbit's PhD. 
The rabbit's PhD. I, I don't know that one. Why don't you tell me? No, no, I, I can't tell them. Dog, you tell her. Come on, Charlie. Talk with the one you learned just the other day. No, I, I can't. Doc, you, you tell her. Yes, you can. Tell her the one you learned just the other day. <laughs> okay, so, so there is this one. Um, how does it go again? Uh, how does it go? Um, a snail. No, wait. Um, how does it go again? Um, a plowman's child was baking some snails. Um, hearing them sputtering, he says, he says, oh, what does he say again? He says, uh, stupid creatures, your house is on fire and yet you sing. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. The moral of the story, everything one does inopportunely is reprehensible. Okay, yes, I, I, I can see that. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I just keep picturing singing snails. <laughs> you're doing so well. Well, thanks to the doctor and the wonderful Marie. Have you met Marie? We're having an affair. Uh, Charlie, <laughs> behave yourself. Sorry, doc. It's true. <laughs> Charlie, it's so good to see you. Are we um, going to finish that game of chess now, doctor, or what? Um, uh, sure. Would you like to say goodbye? Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, Charlie. I will see you again soon. I will see you again soon. Chuck! Steve! Where the hell have you been? I'm doing very well, thank you. How about yourself? Killed anybody lately? <laughs> Should I go and save your life again? Stop it. I've been waiting for you. How long did you think this was going to work? Everyone is getting suspicious. Fine. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've been busy trying to get your ass into trouble again. Oh, really? Yes, really. I've been trying to make some money here and there so I can pay to get you out of here. So, how much do we have now? <laughs> Excuse me? We? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Well, I have just enough to not quite be enough. We'll need a little bit more time. Steve, it's been several days. We need to get out of here. We're fine, but you are running out of time. I've been busy trying to get your ass out of trouble. Again, so don't rush me. This is all your fault to begin with. Don't forget that. If you had killed the guy, we wouldn't have to beat him. Larry. Oops. <laughs> I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
I didn't do anything bad. I just tried to defend myself and accidentally shot someone with a gun that I pushed away. Please, trust me. I'm not a murderer. What are you doing here? See, we're running from the police. Uh, because, uh, because the people that were involved are, are bad, bad people and, and they made everybody think that it, that it was our fault, well his fault, but it isn't so. So we're, we're trying to uh, hide a bit until we can uh, get a of our lawyer to help us out. Is this true, Chuck? <sighs> yes, Mary. You have got to believe us. We are innocent people that got involved into something that had nothing to do with us. Please, don't tell on us. We need your help. Is that the Boston Herald? Yes. Can we look at it? Maybe something will be written in it that proves what we are saying is the truth. resulted in the death of one person. See, Mary? We just wanted to go to the bank and deposit our money. And we walked right into a robbery. When one of the robbers saw us, one of them pointed the gun at me. In the fence, I pushed it away and he pulled the trigger and shot someone dead. They, of course, are part of this group of criminals that had been running banks in Boston all over. They always get away with it. Oh my god! This is true? That's terrible! Is that how you got your injury? Yes, Mary. I got hit over the head and, and passed out. But thanks to my amazing brother Steve here, I got saved. He brought me here. What an amazing story! <laughs> I've never heard anything quite like it. Yeah, neither have I. <laughs> but you see, Mary, it's really important that we stay put here until the whole thing is resolved. Otherwise, the robbers will find me and you don't want to know what they will do to me. Yeah. What exactly would they do to you, you think? Painful. Painful things they would do to me. <laughs> oh, we can't let that happen. Don't worry, I'll help you. I'll do whatever you need me to do. This is so exciting. That would be amazing. <gasps> oh, don't mention it. Look, it says right here, they suspect the famous Bo Lemmings to be behind the robbery and the killing. Bo Lemmings? Who's Bo Lemmings? Who is Bo? You don't even want to know. What's going on? Who is this person? Oh, hello, doctor. Who is this gentleman? Mary, what are you doing here? Mary? Oh, Dr. Bailey! <laughs> Mary? I am... Um, Dr. Bailey! I'm, I'm... I'm sorry I never informed you before, but... But... My father, he told me about this doctor! Says he's a specialist in memory loss! So I... Um, I thought I'd bring him here to see Chuck! Chuck? Yes, yes. My name is Chuck. I remember now. This doctor is amazing. He's <laughs> only been here for a few minutes and already helped me to remember my name. And 
how did he do that? Make sure that Chuck does not get disturbed in this crucial 
because I'm arrested. Of course, Dr. Brother, you said. Steve, get out. <laughs> yes, sir. You know it's true. Get out. What do I mean? Aren't you playing chess this afternoon? I, I don't know. Are we? I thought we are. Maybe I'm wrong. Did we cancel? Not to my knowledge, we didn't. We were on for three o'clock, Doctor. Oh, good. So shall we? Are, are you serious? Are you for real? <laughs> <laughs> are you upset? Did something happen? I could ask you the same question, Doctor. Where were you? Where was I when? We were on for three o'clock, Doctor. But you were not here at three o'clock. <laughs> but 
Is it not three o'clock now? No, it is not three o'clock. It is three o four. You are four minutes late, doctor. You are four minutes late. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I was worried sick. Where were you? What happened? Nothing happened. I thought I was on time. Liar! Where were you? You knew I was waiting here for ages. You know we had an appointment at three o'clock, doctor. Three o'clock means three o'clock and not three o'clock. <laughs> Why are you so worried? I was just down the hall. Down the hall to me? What? You could have told me. I had no idea. I was down the hall signing my paperwork. And it was three o'clock. I left my desk. But then decided to use the bathroom before I come back. <sighs> you can't do that! <laughs> I can't do what? You can't go to the bathroom when you're already late! <laughs> so, I shouldn't have gone to the bathroom even though I needed to go? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. But if you need to go to the bathroom and you have an appointment at 3 o'clock, then you need to go to the bathroom at, at, at 2.56 and not at 3. But what if I go to the bathroom <laughs> and someone is in there and I still have to wait? Oh, then you have to go to the one down the other hall. Yeah, but that one is further away. I would still be late. Oh my god. Then, then you have to go to the bathroom at, 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 at 2.54. But then I wouldn't have finished my paperwork. Oh, stop it! You're confusing me! <laughs> Why don't I come back another time? It seems that you two work up at the moment. It's all your fault! You know, how about I come back tomorrow? No! Well, then you have two options. You accept the fact that playing chess with me is an activity that requires time flexibility. Or... We find another activity that is less time dependent. But I don't want to find another activity. Why not? There's plenty of things to do. There's a uh, yard work. There's a gym. You can go to a library and read a book. But I want to play chess with you. Good. So shall we? Yes. Well done. I'm sorry, doctor. About what? About telling you when to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Don't worry. I came here to play chess and not to discuss my blood. <laughs> You said bladder. <laughs> How are you feeling today? I don't know, Doc. I'm, I'm worried. Worried about what? No. Worried about how long I've been here and how much longer I have to stay. I'm, I mean, this kind of behavior is unacceptable, you know? But after all these days, I should be feeling better, but, but I'm not. Well, getting better takes time. But it's been days. How long have you been here now, Charlie? Oh, well, well, a few days already, haven't I? I mean, I came here on Saturday, and today's Tuesday. No, what, what's today? today? Today's Wednesday. So that's <coughs> today's already, isn't it? That's four days. Charlie, you've been here for four years now. Four years. Four years. Okay. Well, I knew there was a four somewhere. <laughs> How long do I have to be here, doctor? I don't know. We have to see. Well, how long do killers usually have to stay here? Well, it's hard to say. We, we don't have killers often here. Am I your first killer? No. But I must be the most brutal. Why do you think so? Well, because of the way I killed them. You know, and also my temper. No, don't worry about your tempers. I've seen worse. How about Marie? Has Marie seen worse? Marie and I worked together for a long time. Checkmate with three moves. And we've seen many patients come and go. Two. Dr. Gales, Charlie? Oh, speak of the devil. We were just talking about you. Oh, well, I hope only good things. Well, the doctor and I were talking about how beautiful you are. And he and I both agree that you and I would make a wonderful couple and we should get married. Uh, I never said such a thing. Oh, don't deny it, doctor. You may not have said it, but you were thinking it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Charlie, I'm here to remind you that this evening it will be Darlene who will give you your medicine. I will not be here. What? Where are you going? I told you, I'm going out. With who? You didn't ask me. Oh, I don't remember having to ask you. 
Well, who is he? None of your business, my dear Charlie. Oh, come on, Marie, I deserve to know. Uh, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Charlie, I'm not here to tell you who I'm going out with. I'm here to tell you that I will not be here to give you your medicine. Darlene will be here. And you can't be screaming and shouting because you think she forgot. I don't like Darlene. She's ugly. Uh, Charlie, that's not very nice. She's a wonderful nurse who never forgets anything. Yeah, unlike you. That's not true. Well, you do sometimes forget my evening meds. Do I really? Yeah, huh? Well, <laughs> well, make sure Darlene won't forget. What if she does? You know that I cannot sleep if I don't get my evening meds. Well, how about this? I will ask Darlene that when she comes, she shall bring you a piece of red ribbon. Then what will that do? So. When she gives you your medicine, you simply tie it around your pinky. And when you wake up at night and you think she forgot, simply look on your hand and you will see the red ribbon. And that will remind you that she gave you your medicine. Oh, I have a better idea. And what's that? A yellow ribbon. <laughs> very funny, doctor, very funny. Checkmate on both the game and the joke. <laughs> Marie, how about, how about you don't go out? How about you stay here and you forget my medicine yourself? How about no? Come on, Marie, then at least tell me his name. Well, why should I? It's called a compromise. Fine. His name is Aiden. Aiden? That's a terrible name. It doesn't go with Marie at all. Marie and Aiden. Huh, do you even know the guy? Uh, well, we, we've never met. He's a friend of a friend. It's kind of a blind date. Uh, that doesn't work. You can't go on dates with people you don't even know. How long have you known me? <laughs> Have a good night, Charlie. I will be back tomorrow evening to forget your medicine. <sighs> Doctor, do something. Marie and Aiden, really? <laughs> <laughs> I think Marie and Aiden sounds wonderful. Marie, have yourself a good night. You deserve it. Thank you, Dr. Hales. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Hales. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be jealous, Charlie. I have all reason to be, Doctor. My dear sweet Marie is going out with some Aiden she doesn't even know. What if he's a killer? <laughs> <laughs> Just the right man for her, right? <laughs> funny, doctor. Very funny. Don't worry about Marie. She'll be fine. You, have, you should be happy. Tonight is a pizza night. <laughs> I don't even like pizza. Call me if you need me. Good morning, Chuck. How are you feeling today? I'm a bit better. How is the doctor? He's ecstatic. He's been up all night working on his findings. It's like he's possessed. I've never seen him like this before. Well, at least he isn't suspecting anything. Thank you again for helping me out. It's only for a little while longer, then everything should be fine. Oh, don't worry about it. I know you're a good man that just got into something he didn't deserve. I guess you're right. Anyways, speaking of the doctor, he'll be in in a little bit to start your examination. So I thought beforehand, I'd bring you the new Boston Herald. The Boston Herald? Mary, thank you so much. Open it! Boston police now certain. Man behind. Boston police now certain. Man behind robbery. Darn it! Darn it? They didn't catch him yet! <coughs> oh, yes! Darn it! <coughs> I hope they'll catch this bow guy soon. Me too. He's... I mean, why haven't they? I cannot even imagine. I don't know. Well, I hope they find this poor guy soon. Yeah, me too. Good morning, Chuck. Mary? 
How are we on this fine morning? I'm a bit better. Thank you. So, have you retrieved any more of your memory? Who would have thought that after only four treatments, you would remember your mother's maiden name, your shoe size, and your favorite cookie? You have made tremendous progress. I know, Doctor. I can't quite believe it myself. Who would have thought that in these creatures lies the key to my success? Tell me, what do you remember today? Well, <clears throat> after yesterday's treatment, I woke up and I suddenly remember I like my legs over easy. <laughs> Wonderful. And also, I remembered that the US president is Benjamin Harrison. Astonishing. Oh, and also that the sun sets in the west. I'm speechless. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> I'm telling you. I must say, Chuck, I had my doubts. But this is truly remarkable. Truly remarkable. I agree, Doctor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must go back to my research. I decided... I decided to write a thesis. A thesis on the regaining of memory through exposure to images of beastly women. <laughs> God bless them. <laughs> We will. Don't worry. I'm sure this will be over in only a few days. But what about if he finds his, shares his findings with other doctors? He's going to be the laughing stock of the entire society if somebody finds out. I hope they find this bow guy soon. Me too. It's been too long. He's gone away with so much. How is that even possible? Well, you know, it all depends on who you know. It can't be that simple. I'm telling you, if you know the right people, anything is possible. Even hiding from the police. That's horrible. It's horrible, but it's true. It's like my uncle. He's a lawyer, not because he studied law or because he wanted to be a lawyer, but because he grew up in a town where they needed one. His father happened to be the professor of a big university, so he made him a lawyer. So now, he's a lawyer. It's the same with the doctor thesis. You say he's going to be the laughing stock of the society, I say, that depends entirely on who will read his thesis. How so? If he and my uncle's father were related, he would be a famous doctor by the end of the month. Famous for his thesis on how rabbits eat wolves. How rabbits eat wolves? Chuck, you're confusing me. You don't know the story about the rabbit who wrote a thesis? It's a fable. I'm afraid not. <clears throat> so there's this rat, sitting in the woods, typing on his little typewriter. Then a fox comes by and asks the rabbit what he's doing. So the rabbit says, I'm writing a thesis on how rabbits eat foxes. But rabbits don't eat foxes, says the fox. The rabbit says, yes they do, I'm writing about it, let me prove it to you. So the rabbit leads the fox to his den and returns alone a few minutes later to continue typing. Then a wolf comes by and asks the rabbit what he's doing. So the rabbit says, 
I'm writing a thesis on how rabbits eat wolves. But rabbits don't eat wolves, says the wolf. But the rabbit says, yes they do. I'm writing about it. Let me prove it to you. So he leads the wolf back to his den, where there's a pile of fox bones in one corner and a pile of wolf bones in the other. And in the middle sits a big fat lion who says, and here is my dessert. That's, that's terrible. That's how it is. It all depends on who will read his thesis. I guess you're right. I just hope they catch this bow guy soon. <sighs> Me too. Chuck, Mary. Steve, what are you doing here? Just coming to check on you. I don't think you should be here. You have fooled the doctor enough. What if he sees you? He already has. He was almost too excited to speak. He said he can't wait for you to regain more of your memory. The treatment's going really well. Oh, he's hoping by the end of the week you'll know your favorite color. <laughs> oh, I better go check on him. Bye, Steve. Bye, Chuck. <laughs> Bye, Mary. Don't tell me there's something going on with you and the nurse. Don't worry. We just need her until we're out of here. She brought the newspaper. The police are now convinced it was Bo. That's good news. <laughs> Let's just hope they catch him soon. Chuck, once they get him, it doesn't matter if he confesses or not. He's going straight to jail, and you are free to go. I just want this to be over. I'm running out of ideas of what to tell the doctor. How about colors? Very funny. <laughs> How are we doing with money? I have a bit. Enough to pay for this? Probably. Don't you think it's ironic, though? You are paying a hospital bill for a fake treatment. I just don't want to cause any more trouble, that's all. Yeah, well, paying for this fake treatment is a great start, Chuck. Right. <coughs> it's better than nothing. Plus, you are the one who blew this out of proportion. Whatever. I'm just dealing with what we got, trying to stay safe, that's all. You should go. I will. I'll be back in a couple of days. Good luck remembering more things. Of My lucky number is seven. Now, this is his room. Well, oh, it's big. I thought it would be a lot smaller. He seems to like it. Where is he now? In the cafeteria. It's lunch hour. And there's no way that he would. No, he won't come in. Don't worry. I, I just feel so terrible. It, it's been two years and I've never visited him. I just. I just, I couldn't. It's understandable. You've been through a lot. It takes time. Oh, please have a seat. <clears throat> you see, when we were children, we would play a lot. I read him stories. He loves stories with animals. As a child, I, I almost felt responsible for him. But as he grew older, I, I felt more and more disconnected from him. His, his strange behavior and, and his outbursts, I, I couldn't be around him anymore. And then, when the incident happened and, and he lost control, I knew I couldn't handle it. I felt so helpless. I, I didn't know what he would do. I was so scared of him and, and what he would do to me. I had to deal with the loss myself. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with him on top of it. can't even imagine. 
But of course, not much later, after I dropped him off here that night, I, I felt the guilt. I let him down. I wasn't there for him. I'm the only family he's got left, and I'm not there for him. Sometimes I wonder if he even remembers me. Why wouldn't he? I don't know. Because I, I basically disappeared from his life overnight. I wanted to come back after a few days. I knew I had to. I, I just couldn't do it. I was, I was so frightened. I, I was still suffering from the loss of our parents and thought I would, I would just make things worse. Sometimes I worry I'll forget what his face looks like. But, but then all I can think about is his face that night. That, that face of terror, anxiety. Fear, absolute helplessness, and, and in that exact moment I knew I couldn't help him. Probably because I was feeling the same way. Well, all I can tell you is that Charlie has made tremendous progress. He is doing well here. He's slowly making friends, but it's not easy for him, you know? He he talks about incident a lot. He has a hard time falling asleep, but he's doing well. Is he going to be here forever? I don't know. I wish I could see him, but I can't. Not yet. What are you afraid of? I don't know. That, that seeing me might trigger something, something terrible. I'm, I'm scared I'll mess things up. I'm scared he'll hurt me. He has never hurt anybody here. Yes, but you're doctors. I'm professionals. I'm his sister. And I left him here when he needed me the most. I let him down. Well, maybe this feeling lies only in you. Maybe it's not the way he feels. I can't imagine. Not after what happened. I can't tell you that I know for sure. But what I do know for sure is that Charlie's brain works differently from mine or yours. He, he sees things differently. Sometimes he can be so blunt, so honest, so down to earth, like a child. And sometimes he creates his own distorted realities based on assumptions. If I'm late for our game of chess, he thinks something terrible happened to me. Well, that's how it all started. Mum and Dad weren't back when they were supposed to be. I was alone with him and I found out what happened. So as you can see, he can't think rationally. He thinks every time someone is late, it's because they're either dead or something terrible happened to them. Same time, he's incredibly honest and somehow when he speaks, I believe that what he says is truth. If it makes sense. I wish I had the courage to see him. You decide when you're ready. Has he mentioned me at all? Mm, maybe once, twice. I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. What good am I for him? You know, evil for him either. He talks about you like someone from the past. He has accepted this place to be a place of his presence. That's what he lives now. But this is not a bad thing. I wish I could convince myself to think the same. Well, anyway, I'd better go. But I can't thank you enough for all you've done for him. Of course. Just, just promise me, if something happens, call me right away. Of course, Stephanie. Of course. Let me walk you out. Thank you, Doctor. Chuck! Chuck, it's over! It's over! Steve, what are you doing here? It's over! They caught him! They caught Bo! You're safe! They what? They caught Bo? How? I don't know how. But look, it's all over the Boston Herald. Boston finally safe. 
man responsible, responsible for robbery and murder finally caught. Aren't you happy? I guess I should be. I've got all the money. Let's leave now. No, I can't leave right now. I have an after treatment at 3 o'clock. That's funny. I thought you said after treatment? Yes, an after treatment. What, are you trying to remember how you like your favorite dish this time? Or how you like your steak? Very funny. No, it's just... I can't just leave like that. That would be too wrong, too suspicious. We need some kind of transition. I need to tell the doctor that I finally remember who I am or something like that. And then I can go. Why do you care about the doctor? I don't care about the doctor. I'm just trying to get out of this as safely as possible. How are you planning to do that, Chuck? Well, by by telling him by telling him that I finally remember who I am and that I'm cured and that I will go back home now. And telling him that his treatment worked. You're such a liar. Why are you acting so surprised? I don't think it'll make any difference, that's all. Just let me finish this, okay? I will just need. I will just need a little bit more time, just enough to make him believe that my treatment was successful, and then I can leave. Whatever. We leave tonight then, by 7 p.m. Be ready, or this time I'll just leave you here. Good afternoon, Chuck. Was that your brother? Any news? <clears throat> oh, come on. You could tell me. Anything happened? I guess. Well, spit it out already. It's not that important. Well, tell me. Tell me already. I guess they finally caught Bo. They caught Bo? But Chuck, that's incredible. You're safe. We can finally tell the doctor! It's over! <sighs> you see, there's a bit of a problem. I don't think we should tell the doctor right away. He's convinced he's onto something with his new treatment. But Chuck, that's why it's important that we tell him before he gets into this too deep. Or we just wait a little and pretend that his treatment stopped working. So he will stop his research, or something else, I don't know yet. But Chuck, then he'll think of himself as a failure. Well, I just tell him I remember everything. Aren't you going to tell him the truth, Chuck? The truth? Yes, yes, just, just give me one more treatment. But what's one more treatment going to help? It would give me enough time to think of the right words. I'm too anxious right now. I can count on you, right? <laughs> of course, Chuck. Where will you go when you leave? Back south, probably. Back to Boston? Maybe. I have to see how the air feels once I get closer. What will you do when you get there? First of all, play a good game of chess. And then, I don't know yet. Probably go back to my business.
Please, I'll not be much trouble. I don't know, Mary. I think the doctor needs you. <gasps> the doctor doesn't need me. He thinks he can cure people by showing them pictures of ugly women. <laughs> I don't know, Mary. Please, Chuck, just consider it. Well, let's see how things go, okay? But Chuck... Don't worry. We will figure something out. Maybe it will be good for you to get out. Maybe and maybe not. <laughs> we will see, okay? Oh. Okay. Let me... Let me get the doctor for you. Thank you, Mary. I knew I can count on you. Of course, Chuck. Good day, Chuck. Good day. How are you feeling? Dr. Bailey. I'm feeling great. That's wonderful. Tell me, how's your memory? Have you been able to remember the name of your first pet? Vera. Don't tell me you remember your favorite season. No, Doctor. Even better. I remember much more. I remember where I live. You remember where you live? But Chuck, that is outstanding. Yes, it is, Doctor. I don't remember much else, but enough. Well, go on. Tell me more. Well, I live on a farm about an hour from here. I've lived there for a long time. My name is Chuck. A uh, last name? Oh, I don't know yet. But, I'm sure it will come back to me when I go home. Yes. Okay. Uh, go on, what else? Uh, I... Um, I think that I'm not married. And I don't have any relatives. That's why no one has come to look for me. But that's okay. I'm content to live on my own. This is remarkable. <laughs> go on, tell me more. Um... I think th that's it for now. Mm. now. Now, all I need to remember is how to get to my farm. But I think with one more treatment, I should be fine. One? Just, just one? Well, or two. I don't know. Two sounds much better. I was thinking. Maybe we could change the format a little bit. I managed to get my hands on some photographs of uh, beast children. <laughs> <laughs> children might just help you remember things from your childhood. Oh, I see. Well, why not give it a try? Very well. We shall start tomorrow. We shall. Oh, and doctor, I just remembered another thing. And what's that? I remember that I was supposed to be going abroad for quite a while. I don't quite remember where, but for a long time. Oh, I see. So I figure, so as soon as I'm ready to finally go home, I would be going on some kind of a trip. Mm, I see, I see. So, 
it would be hard for me to, to keep in touch, you see, for further research. I understand. But I think your thesis will be wonderful. Indeed, it will be. Think of the remarkable progress we have made. And tomorrow, when we try out the new format, I can't even imagine the new form of treatment. You're right. This is excellent material for my thesis. <laughs> Truly remarkable. Next treatment tomorrow, at the same time. Truly remarkable. I'm going to be famous.
Would you like to play someday? I guess. But I must warn you, I'm really good. So am I. <laughs> How about Marie? Does Marie play chess? Um, I don't know, but we can ask her. She'll be back later. Do I have to go to prison because I killed my parents? You are not going anywhere until you feel better. I feel terrible. I can imagine. <coughs> See, I don't think you should kill anybody <coughs> because you think you're a burden to them. And as a matter of fact, you are not a burden to anyone. Well, you don't know what I'm capable of. <coughs> well, I've been a doctor for a long time. And I've seen and I've worked with many, many patients. Really? Yes. Did you ever cure someone? Well, I'd like to think that I helped some people to feel better. Yeah. <laughs> Did any of your patients ever die? So far, no. Well, then you must be a really good doctor. Though I wouldn't know I never had a doctor. So maybe you're actually a really bad doctor, but because I don't know any better, I think you're a good one. But you must be a good one. You seem to know what to do. And you don't get angry. Well, I don't always know what to do, and I do get angry. Really? And who? At your patients? <laughs> Sometimes, but mostly at uh, doctors. <gasps> no way! I'm serious. <laughs> How do you become a doctor? Well, officially you go to medical school and you study medicine. Can anyone become a doctor? Theoretically, yes, but realistically, no. What does that mean? It means that in the ideal world, so it's theoretically, anyone can become what they want. So, if you want to become a carpenter, go ahead. If you want to become a musician, go ahead. And if you want to become a doctor, go ahead. Okay. See, but in reality it isn't so. So if you want to become a doctor, you have to have good grades, you have to be smart, you have to be able to deal with blood, injuries, death, and so on. So, only smart people can become doctors? I guess one can put that way. So you must be really smart then? Well, um, see, my uncle was also my professor in medical school, so maybe he didn't fail me because I was his brother's son. So, there's a slight chance that you're actually really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's funny. In the medical school, my fellow students would tease me by saying that I could write any thesis and I would still pass. I don't follow. Well, they said that I could write about worse nonsense, but just because my uncle was also my professor, he wouldn't fail me. So I would always tell this fable. What's a fable? Fable. Um, it's a story that uses animal characters that Act and, like, and act and speak like humans to convey a certain message, um, like a moral. There's always a moral to every story. Okay. So there's this fable about a rabbit sitting in the woods and typing on his little typewriter. Rabbit on a typewriter? <laughs> but that's impossible. So he's sitting in the woods, typing away, until a fox comes by and asks him, What are you doing, rabbit? Foxes don't speak. So the rabbit says, I'm writing a thesis on how rabbits eat foxes. To which fox replies, rabbit will eat foxes. And what did the rabbit say? So the rabbit says, let me prove it to you. Follow me to my den. So they both went to rabbit's den. A few minutes later, the rabbit returns by himself and continues typing. <laughs> a rabbit typing. It's so silly. <laughs> so after a short while, a wolf comes by sees the rabbit and asks him, what are you doing, rabbit? <coughs> to which the rabbit replies, I'm writing a thesis. On how rabbits eat wolves. That's right. But, but rabbits don't eat wolves, said the wolf. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> so the rabbit says, well, let me prove it to you. Both go to rabbit's den. A few minutes later, the rabbit returns by himself and continues typing. Yeah, but what's next? A bear? Rabbits don't eat bears. <laughs> no, that's it. But later that day, the rabbit goes back to his den, and in one corner there's a pile of wolf bones, and in the other corner there's a pile of fox bones, and in the middle there's a fat lion. Oh no! So the moral of story is, 
It doesn't matter what you write your thesis about. All it matters who reads it. Now that doctor is a bit far-fetched. Fables often are. That's funny. I think I like you, doctor. That's good. Not as much as, as much as I like Marie. <laughs> <laughs> That's also funny. So fables, huh? You got another one for me? Are dogs ever in fables? I love dogs. <sighs> Fable with dogs. I think I know a perfect one. So, a frog in the marsh cried out to all the animals. I'm a doctor now, and I know all the remedies. To which the dog replied, well, how can you, how can you cure others if you can't cure your own limb? Mm, I love it. Does it mean you're a frog, doctor? Um, I hope not. <laughs> I'm really tired, doctor. Oh, then you should rest. Let me know if you need anything. I will check on you later. Thanks, Doc. Can I call you Doc? Sure. How about, how about Frog Doc? <laughs> how about just Doc? Alright. Good. Let's go in here, it's quieter. I don't know what to do. I, I've never seen him like this. He's, he's lost control completely. What happened? It's, it's, it's terrible that they're, they're, they're both dead. Who is that? Our, our parents, they're both dead. What happened? They were, they were supposed to be back in three to pick up Charlie. They never came back. I was, I was looking after him for a little while. We, we waited and waited and then, then the police arrived and they told me that we did an accident. This is terrible. I'm, I'm sorry. Charlie wasn't involved in the accident. He was with you the whole time. Yes, I, I don't know why he said he killed him. I don't know why he said it. You, you take a daughter just for a few days. I, I don't know what to do. Who brought you here? Are you injured? I, I, I drove as, as fast as I could. I, I didn't know where else to go. I need help with Charlie. Please, just for a few days. Don't worry about Charlie. He'll be in good hands. He'll be okay. He, he thinks he killed him. He, he thinks this was his fault. I understand. Do you need anything? You're shaking. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, uh, please take good care of him. I'm, I will be back. Just, just, just run out. I, I can't. Uh, Stephanie, wait! Dr. Hales, he's calming down a bit. We managed the infection. Uh, thank you, Marie. Just bring him in here. He will sleep for a while. Where is the woman? That's his sister. She's left. She left? Oh no. Just break him here. I have a feeling he will stay here for a while. <laughs> 